3D printing used to be about building, calibrating, and repairing these erratic and slow machines while learning from their inevitable countless failures. But that is now a thing of the past. The new generation of 3D printers are almost as much of a dependent appliance as the regular old 2D printer. This is the Bamboo Lab P1S. It is a 3D printer that makes 3D printing about the end result and not about the printer. It is fast, accurate and reliable. And it works so well that it is almost boring. I have avoided getting a 3D printer so far because I've been unimpressed by the results and the amount of maintenance required. And I didn't really know if it would be useful to me. I recently purchased this printer and it has changed my mind and actually made me excited about 3D printing. About a decade ago, I began building drones, because back then you had to build them yourself if you wanted one. It took a lot of experimenting, crashing and rebuilding to figure out how to make them work and get them calibrated just right. But that was just part of the fun. Then came along a new company named DJI, who began making drones that were ready to fly out of the box. Buying one of these drones won't make you learn much about how a drone works. In fact, they work so well that they're actually kind of boring. But they do let you get good drone photography results without all of the hassle. I think there are a lot of similarities between how DJI changed the way we think about drones and how Bamboo Lab are changing the way we think about 3D printers. I decided to get a 3D printer mostly because I fiddle around with small electronics projects and gadgets. And printing a case, a bracket or a stand will often enhance the usefulness of these. And a lot of these projects are designed with the expectation that you can make parts of them yourself with a 3D printer. 3D printing has obvious benefits if you are designing your own projects. But it can also be useful in everyday life to, for instance, make replacement parts of broken household equipment or enhancements of everyday tools. There is a huge online library of free community-designed 3D parts available. I bought this IKEA cabinet to put my new 3D printer on, but I forgot to buy handles for the doors, so I printed them instead. I really like puzzle boxes, and it is a privilege to be able of printing out a new one when I've become too good at solving the old one. You can also print out many different kinds of simple toys. These clever concepts are food for your brain as it makes you think about how things can be designed to fit into the limitations of the 3D printing process. You will of course also end up printing a lot of useless junk. But printing all of this stuff makes you learn about what is possible to print, how to actually print it, and what the limits of your printer are. So bear with your fellow nerds who've been bitten by the 3D printing bug and are enthusiastically showing you all of their latest tacky prints. The 3D printing hobby has always also been about enhancing the 3D printers. And even this well-designed 3D printer can benefit from a few mods. One of the first things you might want to print is a poop bucket that collects the leftover material ejected from the back of the printer when changing filaments and starting prints. I've also printed this vent riser which lifts up the top glass plate and helps let in a bit more air to the printer when printing PLA, as well as being a mount for an LED light strip. And finally I've printed a HEPA filter bracket, which mounts on the back fan exhaust with magnets. I feel like it's almost too easy to use this printer, because you don't really learn anything if all you have to do is push a button and pick up the results. And even though you don't have to learn about 3D printing to use this printer, you probably want to get a 3D printer because it is a cool gadget and you want to get into the hobby. You have every ability to stray off the safe path and fiddle with all the hundreds of mysterious parameters of this machine. But without years of experience trying to get printers to work and not knowing what the common pitfalls are, a lot of these settings are simply gibberish and it still takes some experimenting and researching to get an insight into this wonderful world. I feel like I've had to learn backwards. I've had to push the limits of the printer and fiddle with custom settings, try ambitious 3D models and acquire exotic filaments before I experienced getting less than ideal results 
or straight up failed prints. Then I began learning. And then I rediscovered my fascination with testing, modifying and adjusting over and over, trying to improve the results and making it do more than it was designed to do. Just like back when I was building and rebuilding drones. I've been pulled into the 3D printing hobby that I've tried to avoid for so long. I've done about 150 hours in this printer and so far it has worked flawlessly. I like that when I want to I can do challenging experiments and when I need to I can do fast and reliable prints. The screen and controls of the P1S are a bit simple and slow but it works just fine and I only use it when I'm changing filaments or for checking how much time is left on a print. The printer connects via Wi-Fi through Bamboo Labs servers and everything is controllable by either an application on your computer or even a smartphone app where you have a live camera feed of the print progress accessible from wherever you might be in the world. It is quite an alluring experience to be lying on the couch browsing the model library in the app finding an interesting print and starting and monitoring it without ever leaving the couch. The P1S comes with this texture PEI printing plate, which works brilliantly. It keeps prints in place while printing, and when cooled off the prints release effortlessly. Just make sure to clean it once in a while, since the oils from your skin when touching the plate can stick to it and make it less effective. There are lots of other plates with various properties available. I've bought this patent H1H plate, which leaves a micro imprint on the surface causing this curious light reflection on the prints. The P1S is an enclosed printer, which makes it capable of printing more exotic materials such as ABS. For the time being I'm mostly interested in PLA and PETG printing, but it is nice to have the option in the future. The primary reason why I got the enclosed printer however is mostly aesthetic, as I like that it looks more like a regular printer than a weird tentacled piece of CNC laboratory equipment. And also, it's easier to dust off. It can be noisy when in use, and I've encountered a few minor bugs in the software. But otherwise, this is a brilliant machine. If you do decide to go for a Bamboo Lab printer, they also have cheaper non-enclosed versions, as well as the impressive looking automatic filament changers for multicolor prints. While operating a 3D printer might always be more involved, and the use cases might be more niche than 2D printing, I still think this is the first generation of 3D printers that are completely accessible to us unqualified beginners, requiring little more than just plugging it in and pressing print. I wonder how my 10 year old self would react if he knew that grown up me would be playing virtual reality games while a 3D printer was printing out new toys. I hope I've given you a small insight into what the Bamboo Lab P1S and 3D printing is all about.